In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are finishing off the fair lady. At least that's the plan anyway. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. How are you, Marty? Yeah, I'm pretty good, thanks, mate. Working on my Daihatsu. How are you? Good. Hey, you know, I had an idea. What's that? How about instead of working on their 240 rubbish? No, we, no, mate, I'm just thinking no. we could work on a Daihatsu. Do a mirror, you know, do no. a token, because as you know, Daihatsu okay, is the best car. Mate, can, don't take me off. You can just. Do not take your hand out of my ass. <laughs> Uh, as we know, Marty is away at the moment working on his super duper secret project, which is not that secret at all. So uh, today, my job is to try and finish off the fair lady. Now, last time you saw it, of course, uh, I had to do uh, a couple of little things for the final points of engineering. There's only one or two of those things left now, but what we have to do today, and by we, I mean myself and a sock puppet, or maybe a friend or two, um, is put the interior back together and also do a bit of a stealth install uh, of a stereo. Of course, this car is designed to be a bit of an all-rounder, primarily a street car, but also do some track days, but also be a date night car that you could take your mum or Cheryl out in um, and have some nice tunes and have it all super comfortable, but also make it super fast. As well as that, we want it to be a bit of a formidable sleeper uh, on the track and as such, since you've seen it last time, it also now has a half cage, which I will show you. So back here, we've got a bolt-in cage. This is made by AGI Precision Roll Cages. We've had a bunch of their cages in different cars, starting with Mod Max, uh, with Tay-Tay, with the 350, uh, and now the S30. This is a bolt-in cage, but when you're working on cars like 70s and 80s cars, um, you can never really be that sure about the quality of the metal that you're drilling into. So these ones here um, are actually bolted into a custom mount that is welded into the car. Um, as mentioned earlier as well, this car had to be engineered with new seat belts as well, which were installed here. So there's a couple of benefits of putting in a half cage like this. One of them, uh, for people who are running harnesses, you can actually wrap your straps around here, even though there's no eye bolts, you can wrap those around. Um, you've obviously got the safety aspect for when you're uh, doing track days and stuff like that, which we'll definitely be doing with this car. But the other one is that when you're adding that much power to a car like this, because this is actually connecting here on this side and this side of the strut as well, it also gives you a lot more rigidity with the chassis. So in a sense, this is working like a rear strut brace and is helping pull the whole thing together. So it's, um, it's a very, very nice cage. And from the back here, it's um, a very awesome look as well from the back of the car. You can kind of see, if I put the boot down a bit, um, you can just see this awesome cage there um, and it just lets you know that this fair lady means business which is awesome so today's job of course is um, the interior so we've got some interior bits to go in there we're also doing a very special stereo install uh, which is going to be awesome and my friend Miles is coming to help me with that and we got a bunch of different stuff to do which I will take you through now so this here is the centre console from the S30 and this here is the factory stereo here. Uh, but my friend Miles has done something very, very special to keep this car, you know, I mean, we're trying to make it a bit sleeperish, uh, and that theme from here continues over here. Uh, we don't want like a big modern stereo poking out, flashing its lights at everybody. So uh, run us through what's happening over here, Miles. Right, so... You wanted a very clean, stealth, don't want to see a new head unit look. Yeah. So what we did was um, took the fascia panel and the deck out. Get rid of them. See you, dudes. Took a copy of, scanned in uh, the faceplate, just yep. using a normal fax machine. Drew up a new fascia plate and then started to 3D print different copies and different styles of fascia plate. And all we want is basically Bluetooth, so you can connect your device to it. That's right. So off you go. That's right. So we started with that one, um, and that was just to make sure we got dimensions. Then I made something new, which was this, 
and that was going to fit in our new deck. So that was going to look like that. Yep. But that didn't really sort of fit the criteria. It doesn't of... float the goat, does it? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. So then we made another version. This was just, again, checking some dimensions, making a little bit more sort of refined piece of plastic. Yeah. Uh, and that was going to go into there, except it didn't quite fit. So that was going to look like that. Yep. And then and now got... the big one. Now the this, big one. This is what I'm all about. Oh. I'm all about a stealthy flap. Look at that. Ah! Oh, just stop it. So now this slots himself into there. Give him a bit of a click. That's amazing. Then we can put the stereo behind there. Hides in behind. So from the inside, everybody, what you see is this. And then when you want some technology, it's behind there. But otherwise, it's bye bye. And look at that. So you don't have any of this crazy modern looking stuff in your kind of vintage interior. This here is the factory speaker and down here is the factory speaker location over here. So we have managed to be able to get like another speaker like that, put it in the mounting points and that there just literally goes in the factory position like that which is pretty awesome. Um, when it comes to subs and things, uh, this car is not meant to be like a too sexy panty dropper, so we're going to do something small under the seat like that. Um, there's heaps of room back here, but the idea is not to have these big two 12-inch subs in the back. The idea is to kind of have it looking like a nice street race car. And stereos and speakers have come a long way in the last few years. They, like, they sound pretty good these days. The first thing I want to replace inside the car is the rubber manual shift boot, which is split due to its age. Because these cars are so rare in Australia, I didn't like my chances on finding a suitable part. But it turns out that all these years on, Nissan make an OEM replacement specifically for 240s, so I ordered this one from the States. With some lubricant on the tip, I can slide it down the gear stick that's connected to our R34 Skyline gearbox. It is a tight fit, but eventually it goes on, then I can put the base plate back on and attach it to the car. The next step is to remove the seats. This makes it way easier when you're doing a full stereo install because you can see where your wiring's going and lay out all your components. With the seats removed, now I can turn my attention to the rear end of the car so we can replace the factory speakers. So these rear panels are held in with these single use clips that are a total pain in the ass. Basically they have these little pins in the center of them and you get a hex key or something and you push the middle out and at that point, it disappears into the depths of the, another galaxy that's inside the car somewhere and then you're just left with this outer plug that is then useless. Um, you would think that maybe technology has got better, but no, these are still used today um, on modern cars. So if anybody knows any tips or tricks with how you're meant to retrieve the middle once you push it out and it disappears, then let me know. So if you listen really carefully, when I put this hex on here, and punch the middle out, you'll hear it drop and disappear into the car somewhere, never to be found ever again. And there it goes. Keeping with the theme of the car, I want to try and keep it as stealthy and pure as possible, so we're going to mount our new speakers in the factory positions behind the rear panels. The original cardboard speakers are well and truly toast, but we are going to reuse the mounting brackets and swap them over to our new speakers. I do need to re-drill them to make them fit, but with that done, they can simply be bolted back onto the original bracket. We're running all new wiring as the original speaker wiring fell apart in our hands as soon as we touched it. And we're also installing acoustic insulator behind the speakers to help stop unwanted vibrations. At this point, if you're really keen, you can go all out and do your whole car, but it can be quite expensive and it can also add up to a lot of weight, which some people are not keen on. The next step is to get the wiring that runs from where our amp is going to sit and solder that to the speakers. If you need more information on how to install speakers in your car, we've got a whole video showing you how on our channel. With that done, the speakers in the factory mount simply bolt back into their original position. 
Meanwhile, Miles has been making a new custom stereo loom that's going to connect the whole system together. With the driver's side done, now I can finish soldering off the passenger side and then reinstall the rear panels for a super stealthy install. The rear speakers are now completely done so we can move on to running some power through the firewall to run the amp and the sub. So we are making loads of progress. The speakers are now done in the back. They are completely installed, done. The panels are back on. The head unit is wired up. Miles is making up a loom so that everything will run and work. The amp is wired up. Uh, it doesn't have power yet, but all the speakers are going into it. Next up is the little hideaway sub that we're putting in. Um, that one there is just going behind the seat, but feel free to send us a comment and tell us how you guys would have done it. That's cool. Uh, next up, what we're going to do is we've got to try and find somewhere to mount the front speakers, and that's the tricky bit, because we don't know whether we're going to go doors or whether we're going to go kick panels or whether we're going to go something wacky. So. Uh, that's going to be an adventure that will only unfold itself once it unfolds itself. Um, so next up what I've got to do is just mount some brackets uh, on the back of the sub, get that installed, that's going to go behind the driver's seat, the amp's going to go behind the passenger seat, and then we can run some power and make sure that everything works. So let's get to it. Oh, the purity! What? The purity! Well now there's less of it to be pure. You've taken the purity No! Stop! No! Oh, the purity's gone now. There's less of it to be pure, bro. Oh, the purity has just been demolished. It's gone. This car was so pure until then. Pure and original. And now you wrecked it. The car still needs to get acoustic underlay and carpet, but I'm temporarily installing the sub so we can work out the length of wiring, power and the mounting position. Check out the purity of this wiring down here. I mean, it's the car obviously looks great from the outside and it's got an RB and all those exciting things. But once you delve inside, have a look at this. Like, some of this wiring is like not even connected and others are just being held together by just like one or two strands. So that's something we're gonna have to fix up as well. I know this is not keeping it pure, fixing this stuff, but this is also important because that, like, who knows where that stuff goes or what it does. But what I can tell you is that that is meant to be connected to something. That wiring may be old and manky and pure, but our new wiring is not, so it's time to try it out and see if everything powers up. All right, so the power has now been connected um, and we've got ground down there, our super purity ground. Uh, and so now, if we turn the key that's hanging off our delightful skid factory lanyard, um, our head unit, which will end up being hidden anyway, should power on. There we go. We're in business. Okay, so we've connected Bluetooth, and of course the first song that anyone must play on their car stereo is Too Sexy by Team Evo. Here it is. All right, we've got sound. And we've got sub. Make sure. Both of those working? Yep. Yeah, awesome. Poor S30, oh. getting too sexy played through it. What a disgrace, there goes the purity. The rear speaker install has been a total success, but that amount of stealthiness will not be possible up the front due to the architecture of the cabin and the shape of the doors. Rear speakers are great for fill, but the quality and tonality of your audio is mainly delivered by the front speakers, so we will need to do some further investigation on how best to fit these up the front. On this side, inside the goo that's holding this plastic on, there's some Japanese newspaper. What does it say, people? Can someone 
get it, flip it, translate it, tell us if it says something amazing. We've spoken about Japanese bondage tape a bit in the past. What do they do with it? Now that we've seen inside the doors, we can have a think about the best way of installing our components up the front. And while we do that, we're moving on to another important job. I've ordered a full carpet replacement kit from an Australian company. This is a really awesome way of freshening up an old car and getting rid of all of the existing human slime. I'm laying the old pieces on top of the new ones to make sure that they're cut the same as there's a lot of variations with these cars. We're also test fitting it inside the car to make sure that it clears everything and anything that's in the way, it's about to get chopped. Using the original vinyl as a stencil, we're cutting out the carpet so that it matches. Because we've got new pedals and some new positions, we also need some custom choppage. With our carpet modified and laid roughly in place, we can move to the centre console. I'm using some plastic clips to replace some lost metal clips on the shifter boot, and now it's ready to install. Okay, so we've adjusted the carpet and cut that by adjusting. We've cut it with some scissors. And now the center console is ready to go back in. Uh, this here I've attached with a couple of plastic clips. Uh, and now we are ready for the stealthiness of Miles' creation. Um, so this here just sits in like this. It doesn't need to be attached with any uh, hot glue or anything like that because the stereo, when it goes in on top, is actually putting pressure on that and holding that down. And then as you can see here, this is just black bumper paint by the way, and this is a 3D printed piece. And as you can see, the color match is superb. And then inside, hello, old and modern. That's freaking awesome. That's some genius spec level stuff, Miles. Thanks man. You should actually sell these. Like if people want them, I know this was like a one-off that you made for me, yeah. but if people want them, they should tell us and then you could make them for them. Cause sure. that's, that's cool, man. It's very cool. For some reason, after all the work that's gone into this car, putting the center console back in feels like a really big deal. I mean, it's just a couple of plugs and a few screws, but it's what it represents. It's something so much more than that, something really important. It means we've actually done it. The car is almost back together and it really feels like we're close to achieving the dream of getting this car on the road in Australia. We simply plug this in, put in a couple of screws and it's done. So the centerpiece of carpet is in that was a bit tricky and required a lot of cutting and fan doogling but it has replaced the 42, 43 year old vinyl that has seen a lot of love juice and that's not love juice as in it's seen a lot of love and then the sentence was gonna go juice and soy sauce and other drinks that have been spilt on it. That's been replaced with brand new carpet. Uh, that needed some fan doogling. Uh, the center console is in now with Miles' mad little flap on it, which is amazing. So now the seats can go back in uh, using, of course, the Ryobi ratchet, which is the best thing they've ever made by far. I love this thing, it's freaking amazing. So seats go in and um, that's, that's where we're at, people. Let's do this. When you're installing seats, seat belts and other safety equipment, make sure you torque them up properly. A torque wrench is a great addition to your DIY setup and a good double check after you've been using power tools. Other than our front speakers and a few pieces of carpet that we still need to lay in, that is it. We've got our new engine, new turbo, new driveline, new suspension, new brakes, new rear end, new exhaust, and now a nicely updated interior with stereo and new carpet. This really is the car of my dreams. So it's been a massive day and I'm so stoked with our super stealthy, sneaky squirrel stereo install. Freaking amazing. So a massive thank you to Miles uh, for helping with that. Uh, of course, our new carpet has gone in as well and we've got rid of that festy carpet and vinyl that is over 40 years old. So we're pretty happy with that. The next step, of course, is going to be to sort out where the front speakers go because that's when you get all your intelligibility of your music. And so that is something that we've got to sort out, but we don't want to be hacking the car or destroying the purity. Hashtag, what about the purity on your beard? And so that is something we're gonna to need to look into next time. Thank you very much for watching. Marty is away at the moment. Of course, he's doing his work on the, it's the comeback of one of his favorite cars and it's probably not much of a secret. No doubt you know what that is. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Next time you're back, the car will be, I'm just gonna say it, we're gonna finish the interior 
Uh, we're going to finalise those little engineering things. The car will be legal, it'll be on the road. Uh, it's going to be freaking amazing. I'm excited. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow us on the Faceballs, faceballs.com forward slash balls. Thank you very much to Miles, who's just asleep down there because it was a lot longer day and night than we expected. And see you guys next time. Let's go get some chicken, Miles. The wishbone chicken is waiting for us, man. Let's do it. All right, I'm done. We'll get Cheryl's sauce all in and around our mouths.